Hi and welcome to part 3 of this Blender Neon Landscape Beginners Tutorial. So in part 3 we're going to create the end sequence and what we'll do is open up Blender first and we'll go to File, Open and we've got version 2 here where we left off. We'll open that up and we'll go into the render view and we'll go to File, Save As and we'll make part 3 or version 3. So we're going to do a little bit more work and we want to scrub to really frame 300 because that's where our camera uh, finishes right finishes its movement so when it gets to frame 300 we want some text to pop up from the ground it could be your logo it could be your company name it could be anything you want it to be so what we'll do is just open up our web browser quickly here and we will go to this website and i'm going to put a link to this font this particular font in the YouTube description and it's, um, it's free for commercial use so if you want to use it on a real project you can I'll click download drag this to the side we'll minimize this uh, I've got this folder so we can see the three versions of our our uh, neon work here and we will drag this font into here close down the browser we'll right click you can extract it with WinZip you can extract it with 7-zip anything will do an extraction tool um, we'll delete the zip file and then we'll rename this to font this folder and inside we've got the font here and we've got this little readme text I'll get rid of that and we'll go back to blender and there's one thing I want to try here that I haven't really tried so this 3d cursor if we if we click on 3d cursor here and then click here for example then press shift a and then insert a text object text we'll insert the text at this location rather than inserting it um, if I press number seven normally the 3d cursor will be right here in the middle right so every time you insert an object you're inserting it here and you have to drag it all the way to where you want it to be so if we press zero again we look at the camera view if we move our 3d cursor to this point then it will insert the object at this point and what we want to do is, uh, let's see, we want to press N on our keyboard and then our text is down here, right? It's in this, uh, let's see, let's drag this down a little bit. Let's do it from the side here. We want to drag this text into this top section, into this top collection here. So the text, you can just, it is text, that's what we can just leave it as. Then in the camera lock to object, we want to type in text and then click text here. Now the 3D uh, where are we? The 3D viewport should rotate around that text if we can get to it. Let's just get to it. Here's the text here, right? Let's just zoom in on that text and we're upside down. Let's rotate it all the way around. It's looking a bit strange. Here it is. So this is the text and the camera is just here. This is the text that we've just inserted. So we'll press tab to edit that text. I'm going to type in DCP web. Right, let's do that again. DCP web. And then press tab again. Now we can see the text DCP web in there. Uh, we can just do object set origin to geometry for now. So we can see it a bit clearer. And I made a mistake that it should be capital B at the end. So now we can see DCP web here. We'll go quickly to the object data. We'll go to the font and we'll open up the font folder and we'll select that font we downloaded, drive through, click open. Now we can see the text here. It's probably the right sort of size already, but we can adjust that in a minute. Um, what we want to do is, uh, let's see, we want to rotate this, right? So press R to rotate on the X axis, so press X and then 90 degrees, nine zero. So we rotate it so it's standing face up. And then we'll use the move tool and grab it so that it's just above the floor, right? Something like here, we wanna move it back a bit. So let's press zero on our keyboard so we can see the camera. That's what the camera's seeing. And we wanna move the text back a bit and we also wanna reduce its size. So let's go to the size option here and make it a bit smaller. So we can see it a bit easier something like this this sort of size we can drag it to the right a little bit 
And the nice thing about this text is it will actually affect and cast shadows as well, right? And we want to move it back somewhat. So to do that, we'll go to the, we can do that from here actually, location on the, uh, be on the Y axis. So let's move it back here. Let's move it to around here so we can see it clearly. We might make it a little bit bigger. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Drag it to this side here to something like this then we need to give it a material so let's go to the material uh, where is the material here and click new and then we'll just pick a color for now let's pick um, let's just do blue for the minute and let's press F12 let's see what happens so so we can see the text there but we don't see its color because there's probably not enough the lighting is wrong in here right so let's see what we can do here let's try and set it to emission and We'll leave it at 1 and we'll try and set it to blue and then render it F12. Okay, that's what we wanted. So we need to we need to make this object emit light itself. And we do that by changing it to the, the surface from principle to an emission. So it's, it's its own light source. Then you can increase the light or decrease it if you want more glow. Maybe we'll set it around 5 and see what that looks like with F12 it render around that's what our text will look like i'm going to keep this part pretty simple but what we want to do is press number seven so we can see it from the top uh, let's see where are we uh it's going to be hard to see because it's not got no thickness so click on make sure the text is selected here click on the letter a here and then go to let's see the uh geometry and set the extrusion you can see it's getting fatter now here let's set it to 0 0.1 press 0 on your keyboard that takes us back to the render view let's press f12 and see what it looks like so probably there's too much glow in this uh, let's go back to the material and reduce that to maybe one again and press f12 Let's just have a look at it. Probably what we need to do. Let's try one thing. Let's press number seven. We're going to top view. We've got the text selected. Press uh, shift and D to duplicate it. So we've got two text objects, right? This one we call it text front. And uh, we call it text light. And the other one, let's call it text front so with the text front selected let's move that to the front here let's set the uh, we can set the emission strength to zero but they're sharing right at the moment so let's let's leave that at one and then in the material up here so select text front we need to get rid of this material just click the minus and create a new one for it and we'll set that to black for now let's try that and then we need to reduce its thickness so let's set the object they are for this font the extrusion down to 0 0.1 and then move it in front of the text so around here and then press 0 and then let's render it f12 now we've got like this black front to it but then we've got the, the blue glow to it and I think we can increase that glow now. So let's go back to the light, go back to the material, and let's increase this uh, to five again. Five and press F12. And then we can see that text. So I like that, that's fine, that works for me. We've got the black front to it and then we've got the text glowing. I think that looks okay. 
you can experiment with this you can you know you probably know how to put text in yourself you can choose a different font you can do whatever you like the one thing i do want it to do is to raise up from the floor when we get to the end so this is the end frame here um and what we'll do let's see let's press uh we need to we need the lock object we need to get rid of the text here so just click the x here to to stop it locking to the uh the text object we'll press n on our keyboard we need to click on the text light here and then shift and click on the front one so you select both of them move into here and press ctrl p and we want to parent the objects so click object here press ctrl p then click object now these two are parent so if i click on this front font text if i move it it will move both of the text objects the front and the back of it yeah so we want to move it so that it sits under the floor so around here press f12 to render and just make sure we can't see it we can't see the text then we're going to press the record button and it's already selected so we'll press i to insert a location keyframe and we'll move to frame 400 oh let's do 390 actually 390 and we'll just drag this text up so that it gets shown like this you can drag it however high you want i think around here is fine and then that text will now raise up from the floor here like this now in my other tutorial i did a like a some smoke and stuff coming off of it but i didn't think that looked very good so i'm going to leave the smoke i've got other tutorials on youtube showing you how to do smoke effects on text and stuff like that so you can experiment with that make sure whenever you um finish doing an animation like this one we just did there always make sure you untick this record button otherwise you start clicking on things and it starts recording other stuff and it goes nuts and you don't really want it to do that so tick it make sure this is always off when you're not using it so let's just do one more flyby see what it looks like press play make sure we're happy with everything Yep, I'm okay with that. Again, you can now go and experiment and play around with this as much as you'd like, whatever you want to do. I've got uh, Blender open here. We're on the very first frame and we're going to go to the uh, render here. And in the viewport, we're going to set it to 120 and the render samples will set to 120. Pretty much everything else, we should be okay. Let's just do one thing. I've just noticed one thing. Let's go back to the... Um, very end frame here and let's turn on screen space reflections and let's see if we can tick this option here go to the uh, land setting here or click on the land object make sure screen space reflections is ticked off and then go to its material and we should in theory We should be able to get like all of these objects reflecting the light this one in the middle is pretty strong this green light source so this one was the first light source we put in right so that was point this point here I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click on this one here and I'm gonna hold down the shift key and click on where is it the middle one this one here and I'm just gonna drag them up a little bit to around here so i want to try and get this reflection of the text so let's press f12 and see what that looks like let's go back some frames and see what the rest of it looks like with this uh, screen space reflection added it might be too much but it might look cool as well this is actually different to the last one i've done a lot of these um these objects that are in light are now reflected over this surface right you can see that might look pretty cool i didn't do that in my last tutorial 
So maybe we'll leave those settings like that. So all I did was really um, move these point lights up and move them up so they're not so close to the floor. And you can move them wherever you want. We could even animate these, right? We could have them like moving upwards towards the end. Maybe we do that. Maybe we'll have them like around here, quite low. Uh, let's see here, we need to group these, right? So I've selected the first one, point left. I've hold down the shift key, select point middle and then holding down the shift key, I'll select point right. So these are the, these three here. I think we parent it. No, we didn't parent these. So press Control P, and then select Object here. Then I think it's this right one, right? That will move all three of them. No, it's not the right one. It's the middle one. Yep, the middle one. So the middle one was the very last one I selected. I selected point left, shift, and clicked point right. And then it was the middle one I selected last. So the middle one becomes the parent. This becomes the master one. Because when I press control P and object, it's the very last one that you select is the one that you can click on and move all three of them at the same time. So if I move it out of this scene down here and then move to, where is this thing raising up from, let's say, from around frame to 90. Let's set it to around here, frame to 90. If I hit the record button, this middle left one is selected, press I to insert a location frame, and then move to frame 390, and then press I to, in fact, we'll go to 400. Let's go all the way to the end, 400. Press I to insert a location frame and then drag this light object up to where you like it, wherever you want it to be. You can raise it all the way out. I think around here where we get quite a lot of color coming through. Looks quite nice, but I wanna maybe get, yeah, I think that's actually gonna look pretty good. Let's press F12. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go to file save. That was just a little extra thing that I didn't do in the last tutorial, but I think it looks good. This is your choice, so of course, you know, you can do whatever you feel like. Um, we'll go to the output settings. We want to set it to 30 frames a second. We've got 400 frames, so let's just see. We've got 1 to 400. That's fine. Let's, um, you know, one thing that always makes me a bit paranoid. Remember, untick this record button, right? One thing I normally always do before I render out a scene, just to make sure, is I click on the part particle emitter up here, and go to the particle emitter here, free the bake and rebake it. It takes seconds. Click on the right one, free the bake and rebake it, and just give it one more play. And then pause it here. And make sure like this. You shouldn't really see this particle emitter, although we can see it in this scene here. If we click on the left and right one, we should never really see that in the render because it doesn't have any material. So yeah, it's pitch black up the top here, right? You don't see them, so that's good. And we'll just run through this quickly and make sure we see all the particles. That's all fine, that's all good. We're good to go. Let's save it. Let's go back to the first frame. Let's go to the output settings. So this is the output settings. The resolution is 1080p. All of these settings are going to stay the same. 400 frames, 30 frames a second. Click on this. In fact, first of all, click on PNG and set it to AVI JPEG. Set it. We can leave it at 90% compression is fine. RGB is good here. Click on the folder. Go to your desktop. Find a folder where you're creating your work and just click accept. Then press Control and F12. It's going to render out each individual frame. That's going to take some time, maybe about five or ten minutes. So I'll let Blender go away and render out all of these frames, and we'll see the end result and see what we think. So I'm going to pause the video here. Okay, so Blender's finished rendering out all the frames. We're on frame 400 here, you see. So it's done all 400 frames. Let's close this. Let's go to File, Save, and we can close down Blender now. 
and on my desktop I've got this folder <clears throat> and inside this folder we'll see this AVI file so if we open this up we can see what the end result looks like we'll leave it on looping for the minute so let's just click repeat we can see all these objects bouncing down these squares and the camera's rotating and we get this light effect so I think it looks pretty cool I don't know what you think maybe your one came out different it all depends on how this scene is set up and how you animate this camera but I think it looks pretty cool I quite like it um, so hopefully your one come out pretty well uh, if it's not looking quite right on the first render then you can always go back and render it it doesn't take that long to render out it's quite simple objects in here um, but overall I'm quite happy with the end result at the end you don't have to put DCP you can put any sort of text you want your name can be your company name it could be anything you want you don't even have to put that text there at the end you can just leave it like this it's entirely up to you so you're free to experiment with this project now and you can create other types of landscapes that don't have to be this this like vertical landscape right it could have been a very wide one or it could be a square one and the camera can move around in this different type of environment so it's really down to you for you to go and experiment now and see um, what you can do with this uh, this particular project okay we've seen it enough times let's uh, pause that here I do like the way <clears throat> it builds up at the beginning because the camera camera focal length right and it's looking pretty cool it worked out quite well so I hope you enjoyed that tutorial it was three parts, it was a bit long to do this tutorial, but I thought I'd break it down into parts so it's a bit more manageable. And I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.